Now that I have your attention, yes, these are not actually giant blocks, but I think they're big enough to show how the method works. And while this stone is not huge, it's certainly heavy. I measured it and calculated the weight at around 350 pounds. And I'm strong, but I can't lift that completely off the ground. There's no way. I'm gonna start by lifting one end so I can get the lever underneath. And working against me here are a couple things. First of all, the ground is really soft. And second of all, the stones are not a regular shape. They're flat on top and bottom, but the ends are not straight at all. So it's not gonna stand up on its own like a block that's squared off on the end will. The block I'm working with here is also longer than the ideal length, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I need to get it lifted up high enough so that I can get the long lever underneath and then I can use that to stand it up. And here I'm trying to put pieces of wood underneath the crooked end to keep it standing up, but the ground is way too soft. So I'm just gonna use the long lever to prop it up. This is something I talked about in the follow-up video where you actually walk a heavy object over to where it needs to be. They obviously couldn't do this with those gigantic stones, but I thought I would show it here because I have to do it anyway to get the stone over to where it needs to be. Once again, working with the crooked end of the block here, I'm gonna use another block of wood to hold it up straight. An important part of this method is that there has to be wood underneath the block as it's being tilted up. And what the wood does is it will grip the corner of the stone and keep the other stone on top from slipping back. I'll take a few seconds to straighten the stone out before I continue. Last operation is to roll it forwards and I'm using a piece of pipe to do that. Of course the real pyramid builders would use a large log to do this, but I'm just working with what I have that's around the right size. You might be asking, why did I bother to do this? And the simple answer is, is that I'm not just a talker. I'm a doer. It's one thing to sit in a chair and dream about how this could be done and make all kinds of fancy animations for ultra complex ways. But it's another thing altogether to get out in the real world and actually do it. And even though I'm working with a block that's a fraction of the size of the originals, I did it by myself in less than ideal circumstances. And if you take away the time it took to move the camera around and actually film this, I did the whole thing in less than 20 minutes. Think about how easily this could be done with a group of experienced people working with the right equipment under much better conditions.